Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Miranda Mills and today I thought I would share with you the first books that I borrowed from the London Library. I was given membership to the London Library for my birthday which I think is one of the very best birthday presents I've ever had. My birthday was at the start of October so I've been a member of the library for about a month now but so far I've just borrowed one lot of books and I thought I'd share them with you. The library is a private library in Mayfair in London. It's in the most beautiful old building and there are just millions of books. It really is a book lover's paradise and they have a really interesting collection of books there including many books by female writers of the early, early 20th century which is my time period really. That's the time period I'm really interested in. So it's been such a delight to use the library and to get to borrow some of their beautiful books. So I thought you might be interested to know what books I've borrowed from the London Library. Okay, first up is this book which is called Murder in the Home Guard and it's by Ruth Adam. It's a mystery book that's set during World War II. I'm really interested in literature set during the Second World War and I love cosy mysteries. So I think I first heard about Ruth Adam in a Slightly Foxed magazine. Slightly Foxed is a literary quarterly magazine that I subscribe to and this article just piqued my interest. So when I saw that the London Library had some Ruth Adam books I thought I would give one a go. I haven't read this yet but I'm sure that I will enjoy it. I hope I will anyway as I do love sort of cosy mysteries set during this time period so we'll have to see. The other fiction book that I got from the library is called Rhododendron Pie and it's by Marjorie Sharp. I really like Marjorie Sharp. She wrote in the sort of 1930s, 1940s. Um, I read one of her books, Clooney Brown, which I absolutely adored. And although some of her books are now in print, um, some are still quite hard to find, including Rhododendron Pie, which was one of her very first, in fact, no, Rhododendron Pie was her first book. So I'm really interested to read it. It sounds really fun. It's about a young girl who's brought up in this very intellectual um, family who really fancy themselves. I think they do think they're rather a cut above everyone else and they're quite unconventional. They're quite unconventional, but they're real intellectual snobs. And she ends up rebelling against this by dating, I think he's like a banker or something, which the family really disapprove of. It would be fine if he were a filmmaker or writer or something like that, but definitely not a banker. And it just sounds really fun. I read a review of it online, which compared it to both The Lark by E. Nesbitt and Marganita Lasky's The Village. And those are both books that I really love. So if this does prove to be a bit of a mix between those, I'm sure I will really enjoy it. All of the other books that I borrowed are all non-fiction. The London Library have a lot of um, memoirs and biographies, so I took full advantage of that to get out some memoirs that I've really wanted to read for quite some time. So the first one is Random Commentary by Dorothy Whipple. I'm a big Dorothy Whipple fan. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know her books, if you know Persephone books, because they've now published all of her novels. I really recommend High Wages and Someone at a Distance. If you haven't read any Dorothy Whipple books, they're two of my very favourites of hers. Um, but she is, very, is a very typical Persephone author in that she writes novels that are very much concerned with domestic family dramas, but they're also so much more than that. She really is an incredible writer. So I was really excited to get this, which is a collection 
of her sort of diary, journal entries and notebook entries from 1925 and onwards. And I've been loving reading this because she comes over as such a delightful person, which I think is wonderful because when, when, when you really like an author, you do hope that they'd also be someone you would actually maybe like in real life or have liked in real life. And I really feel this with Dorothy Whipple. She's got such a wonderful style to her writing. She really does laugh at herself a lot. And it's full of funny little anecdotes. Like she obviously really wasn't much of a cook, which is quite funny. I'll read you a bit from the beginning. Um, she says, here begins my first new year in Nottingham. I still make new year resolutions, though I ought to know by this time that I never keep them. However, I'll try. I hereby resolve to, to get up early in the mornings, keep this journal and write something every day. I have spent the morning in cooking, but my efforts were wasted because when we came to eat it, the chicken wasn't done enough and Henry had forgotten lettuce for the salad. <laughs> so she sounds just like everybody else, knowing that she'll probably fail with her New Year's resolutions and also sort of failing with the chicken. But I just think it makes her so human, which I really enjoy. And there's some wonderful bits in it um, about actually getting her books published. There's an extract here where she first has heard that she'll have her first novel, Young Anne, published. And she writes, I was practically voiceless when I arrived for the interview and sat with a thumping heart while Mr. Cape said flattering things about young Anne. He showed me the reader's reports as I read about my extraordinary sense of humour and remarkable powers of characterization. My face must have got imbecile in expression. It's a wonder I didn't float out of the window. So elated and inflated was I. And then she writes, I feel different. Life is different. I've got a job. I'm not lost anymore. I know what I want to do with my life. I have to write. I signed the contract for young Anne. And I just think this is really quite a moving book as well. I, I really do love getting insights into an author's journey. And this really does that. Um, I haven't quite finished it yet but I really love it. I wish it was more easily available. I really wish that Persephone Books would publish this because any fan of Dorothy Whipple would really like this, I know. So I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, I also got Dorothy Whipple's memoir. So I don't think she actually really enjoyed writing this in the, in the commentary, um, the random commentary. There are quite a few remarks in it. Um, where she said how hard it was to write her autobiography and uh, she really didn't seem to enjoy it. I haven't got to this yet. I am really intrigued to find out more about her life. And I'm quite intrigued to read it, intrigued to read it too, knowing that she didn't very much enjoy writing it. Um, so it's called The Other Day and I will report back on this one because I'm really quite intrigued and it, whatever the case it will be good to know more about Dorothy Whipple's life. Okay next up are two more memoirs both by Winifred Peck. Winifred, Winifred Peck is another Persephone author that I like. They published her book Housebound and also I've been getting some of her books that have recently been republished by Dean Street Press. They're furrowed middle brow books by Dean Street Press and they've started releasing some more of Winifred Peck's books which I think is wonderful. This one is called Bewildering Cares and it's set in the early days of World War II. It's um, a diary of a vicar's wife and it's just a really funny entertaining read. But anyway, Winifred Peck is another author that I really enjoy, so I was very excited to get her memoirs. This one is called Home for the Holidays, and it's a collection of her writing about the holidays of her childhood and her life. I'm really keen to read this one. I don't know if I'll read it in order, if I'll just sort of dip in and out of it, because for instance, 
she's got a section on Christmas holidays and Christmas presents and I really want to read those especially as Christmas is coming up. I think this will be a really delightful book, I hope so. I know I love her writing and it'll be wonderful to get an insight into the holidays that she remembers from summer holidays to Easter holidays, Christmas holidays. Um, one section is called Holidays in the Twenties, another Holiday Motor Cars. I think just th this sounds just a really charming read, so I'm looking forward to that. And then this one is called A Little Learning and it's Winifred, Winifred Peck's memoir of her Victorian childhood. It's called A Little Learning or A Victorian Childhood. And I really love memoirs. I especially love reading memoirs of writers whose work I really enjoy. So I'm excited to read this. And it is an imprint. Um, I think most of these books that I've got out from the library are not in print at the moment. So I feel really lucky to have been able to borrow them. But I will remain hopeful that some of these will come back into print so that we can all enjoy them. Finally, I also borrowed Barbara Pym's A Very Private Eye. And this again is extracts from her journals, diaries and letters. And it's edited by Hazel Holt and Hilary Pym. I really love Barbara Pym's writing too. I know that I'm going to enjoy this. I'm just gearing up to starting to research and write a novel myself. And I find it's really inspiring to read the memoirs of writers who you admire. And I definitely admire Barbara Pym. So I'm looking forward to gaining a bit more insight into who she was as a woman beyond who she was as a writer through reading this. Anyway, those are all of the books that I have borrowed from the London Library. I'm working my way through them steadily and I'm sure I'll be reporting back on them in future videos. But I'd love to know, are you a member of a library? Do you regularly borrow books? Are any of you a member of the London Library? I'd really love to know and as, and as always, I'd love to know what you're reading and enjoying at the moment so please do leave a comment. I do normally try to link books that I mention um, in the description box below. I don't know how easy it will be to link to these books as so many aren't in print, but I will link to the ones that I've mentioned that are in print, and I'll link to the authors that I've mentioned as well. But I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel so you can see other videos by me in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.